Now we are at the Medway Creek, which flows into the Times River near UWO. And uh, here is a great site of glacial deposits in London. So those deposits are formed by glacial events and the till layers are just like this and uh, the outcrop behind me uh, is consisted of these gravels and the silt. So a till layer is usually formed by these uh, various size and forms of uh, uh, rock fragments. Around 20,000 years ago, uh, two glacial lobes met here in London and formed this moraine called Ava Moraine. What is this bank here behind us? Is this, is this just part of uh, like a regular ravine? Yeah, that is a part of the Arva moraine and as the, as the river flows through the moraine, it cuts off like eroded parts of the moraine and that part is more rich in silt. So that's why it forms like a bank and the river meanders here. The till is different from like regular riverbed like gravel, right? Till is different from the river gravels because uh, till is formed by the glacial deposition and the glacier is able to carry various forms of uh, rock fragments. So usually the fragments are of different sizes and uh, different forms like they can be either subangular or round. So those are the poorly sorted rock fragments that you can find in till. How does till affect the infiltration of, of groundwater in different locations? Well, the till is usually rich in silt and clay minerals like a, a pit or a cattle lake that's formed by the glacial events will be uh, sealed by those silts. So those groundwaters in those pits are hardly connected to any streams or rivers. So that's a way that influenced the groundwater flow. A round pebble like this would be from something that would have been brought here by glaciation, right? Like this one's yeah, subangular. Subangular? Right. And then uh, this one is like sub-rounded. Mm. But those can be reshaped to by this river. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to tell if it's from the flow of the river or if it's from the glacial. Right. But they, this guy must come from the glacial. Okay. Yeah. Like this subangular. Okay, because you would never get subangular rocks like that from the flow of the river. Right. Yes. Okay. Now we are at the Sifton Bog and this is a special site because of its unique uh, vegetation environment and actually this bog is formed around 10,000 years ago by the melting of the ice sheet. So as the ice sheet retreated, a large piece uh, of ice fell off from the major ice sheet and uh, left here and it was buried uh, partially or wholly under the glacial till. Uh, and uh, after thousands of years, this ice block was melted and uh, formed a depression. And this is called the Kettle Lake. And uh, this place is unique because it was poorly oxidized and uh, some peat deposits were formed uh, under the lake. And uh, as the lake was covered by peat and the, the mud deposits, a bog was formed here. So because of its lower oxygen level and uh, the cool environment, the vegetation here is very different. It's full of mosses and uh, the carnivorous plants. So that's what makes this site special. Now we're looking at the real Sifton Bog. So this is formed by the uh, melting of one ice block from the ice sheet. And uh, after it melted, uh, a depression was formed and covered by peat and mud. So this water uh, is from the uh, precipitation and runoff and uh, it was disconnected to the groundwater because the bottom of the bog uh, was blocked by the silt and the peat. So that's why this environment is special. So 
water's just pooling here because it's got nowhere else to go, really. Right, yes. Why is the water so dark? Uh, it is dark because the peat is uh, rich in organic matters, and those organic matters are dark gray or black in color. It gives the water this color. So now we're at the Whisperwood Park, and we are standing on the Ingersoll Moraine. And uh, the Ingersoll Moraine is an end moraine that was formed by the retreat of the area lobe uh, towards the southeast. The moraine is this ridge-like landform uh, formed by the glacial till deposits. So the formation of this moraine represents a standstill of the area lobe 14,000 years ago. Some man-made uses of moraine that we can see. There's the Boulder Mountain Ski Hill down to the west of us. And just behind us to the east is Colonel Talbot Road. And right on the other side of that, we have the large sand pit. At the sand pit, there are they extracting the glacial till material or the material left behind from the glacier? Uh, from the pit, those are the gravels and the sands that were formed at the, like the delta area of the glacier. Uh, it was uh, in front of the ice sheet. Like when the glacial lobe retreated, uh, the melt river could flow on the ice sheet or within the glacial lobes and carry the sands and gravels and deposit them uh, to the ground in front of the glacial lobe. Okay. Yeah. So moraines in southern Ontario are pretty good locations for aggregate companies to pursue for cement making and, and fill and other things like that? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now we're at the Springbank Park and this is the Thames River and this is a good site to see the glacial deposits. Uh, looking over there, uh, that riverbank is uh, formed all by the quaternary glacial deposits and here is a site of two competing glacial lobes, the Huron Lobe from the northwest and the uh, area lobe from the southeast. So there are at least two till layers that were formed by different lobes. Uh, if we get a closer look at the bank, we are able to see the till layers, but now it's too far away and covered by vegetation. So here is the meandering oxbow pond, and the other side is the Thames River. So there was a time that here was covered by a lake. And as the lake drained away, the Thames River still flowed and eroded the glacial tills and deposits. The Thames River meandered afterwards and some abandoned channels were formed by the erosion and cuttings of the riverbed. So these coves ponds were formed by the abandoned channels. Now the ponds are no longer connected to the Thames River, but it's connected to another uh, sub-watershed in the south by like a, a steep-sided valley. So now we're at a Greenway Park, and this is the Thames River, and the Cove's ponds are just over there on the opposite side. So just imagine that 10,000 years ago, the Thames River came from that area instead of the, the, where the upstream of the Thames River is now. So now we are at the Westminster Ponds, and these are the Cattle Lakes. Cattle lakes are those uh, permanent depressions that are uh, infilled by glacial till deposits and water. Uh, so around 14,000 years ago, as the Huron glacial lobe retreated and part of the ice uh, were fell apart and left behind, those ice blocks were buried by the glacial tills and eventually melted. Uh, so it formed a depression like this. So these ponds were formed around 10,000 years ago uh, when the ice blocks were totally melted.
We are at the Warkasin Pond, and the Templeton Pond is over there in the southwest, and Spadigi Pond is in the southeast. There are three ponds here, and the water in the ponds are... Three ponds here at Westminster, and then three at Pond Mills, right? Which is like almost connected. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but those ponds are, the water in those ponds are fed by the surface runoff uh, and oh, okay. these are not connected by natural uh, stream. So it is a great site to uh, learn about the surface water and groundwater cycles. Uh, so because it drains away really slow, it only like drains away uh, near the, like, the bog or wetland area, not directly into the ground.